going to kick off. And for those of you who are not as familiar with Easy Sigma, uh, we're very happy that you came to join us. Uh, you can see on the screen right now our vision and mission statement, uh, but basically we're very passionate about continuous improvement. And we use Lean Six Sigma as that tool to help organizations become more efficient, more effective. And I think especially with what's going on around the world right now, it, it's becoming especially clear how processes are working, which ones do and don't, uh, especially with people moving to working from home. So uh, it's something we love to do. Uh, we also are proud to present that we have a multitude of resources. So we do specialize in training and education, consulting. However, we do also have partnerships with several different softwares. Uh, as you can see, uh, the eSoftware Compass is our latest partnership that we have. Uh, for those that are needing to do some time motion analysis, uh, OTRS provides a great uh, tool for that. Uh, in fact, I, I heard they used it once to help a chef teach everyone else in the kitchen how to do certain recipes. So, uh, and then, of course, there's Process MA and Minitab for statistical and um, analysis and, and just to understand. So. Uh, today, as I mentioned, Jeff Woods is our speaker. He has been working with Easy Sigma for several years. I've had the privilege of being in some of his classes and just working with him. And he brings a wealth of knowledge to the table, many different industries. So I have no doubt that you will definitely gain some great insights from him. So without further ado, Jeff, I'm going to hand it over to you. Great. Thank you, Liz. Appreciate it. Uh, again, my name is Jeff Woods, so I'll be the person taking you through our journey today, and we'll be talking about change management. We'll, we'll speak to it in a couple of different contexts. Uh, one is sort of change management as its own wrapper around things. We'll also talk about change management in the context of continuous improvement, uh, Lean Six Sigma, and, and also because it's so topical, we'll also take a look at it in regards to what's going on today and the impact and some of the changes in change management uh, uh, sort of barriers that are going on right now. So we'll kind of come at it a couple of different ways throughout the, the seminar. If there's any questions afterwards, uh, please uh, feel free to reach out to us and, and we can have any kind of discussions that you'd like to have in regards to kind of where you're going as your business or how you're managing this transition that's going on, however your company happens to be uh, impacted today. So our objectives, we're really gonna talk about change management and kind of how does it fit, uh, kind of that relationship around preparing people for change. Reality is, you know, no matter how uncomfortable we are with current state, there's a typical bias towards not wanting to change and that's human nature. Uh, and so we have to think about contextually, we'll, what are people thinking? Why are they thinking that? And, and what, what are the right things and the right uh, positions in the organization that we can use to, to move it ourselves forward? But what is change management? Kind of a collection of, of different views out there, but discipline that guides and provides oversight on how we prepare, equip, empower, and support employees to successfully adopt and embrace change to drive and achieve organizational success and outcomes. Because at the end of the day, it's all about being successful in where we're trying to get to. I mean, we're evaluating at any given time where we are today, uh, you know, how well our, how our processes are performing or how well our organization overall is performing. We contrast that with kind of where are we today versus where do we need to be in the future and then how are we gonna get there? And you can look at that from a, a macro level at an organizational level or at a more micro level at an individual process level, but looking at the metrics and what's working, what's not, what's not working in our processes and how that relates a lot to today. Um, if I'm getting some uh, knock, somebody I think is, does not have their, if you could have your mic, uh, muted just because it gives us sort of feedback just makes it harder to hear me if that's possible 
Um, but anyway, in the context of today and COVID-19, because reality is all our processes have changed, or many of them have changed, whether that's changed in regard to that we have staff still coming in, but we've had to implement you know, distancing and new safety protocols, or whether that's a change, and we'll talk about both of these, or whether it's a change because people are working from home now. And so obviously how, how we communicate, how we move data, how we move information, what that process flow looks like has changed. And as we go through our integration to whatever that new normal is for your business or your part of the business, you're gonna have uh, change again. And it's really important, in my opinion, as you know, or organizations are putting together their strategy groups around how do we manage this, uh, this transition. And, and typically one of those functions is sort of looking at business continuity. And I really recommend that sort of that whole idea around uh, continuous improvement and understanding what's changed, what's the art of the possible, what, what things are better because of how we had to move forward over the last few months, and then what things have been challenges. So what you don't want to do is have people go back and things to go back the way they are. There's been a, a tremendous opportunity for uh, massive improvement through disruption, and, and it's up to every organization to decide, you know, how does it want to embrace this change, and how does it want to embrace and use this as a way of really improving its ability to meet the needs of its customers. So we'll talk, we'll continue, that'll be a continuous theme as we go through this, but uh, and in general, we're talking about the wrapper of change management. And, and change management, sort of, sort of building on what I just talked about, happens at a whole bunch of different levels. I mean, think of it as a, a dartboard where you've got that center of the individual. So there you can be, kind of working at an individual level around change and how we're going to do that, how we communicate and, you know, that old adage of with them, what's in it for me, and making sure that we're speaking in a language and in terms uh, that, that makes sense and uh, to the individual. And then you've got the organizational, because it could be that there's changes in departments uh, and sort of smaller structures within the organization or the organization in totality, and then the whole enterprise, which could be the the whole company, or it could be the whole industry that your organization is in, and lots of dif lots of disruption going on, lots of changes. It's interesting if you think back over the last few months of uh, how so many, particularly sort of customer-facing businesses, have had to change how they communicate with you. You know, you no longer could walk into the uh, Canadian Tire Store, first it started by, we're closed, and then, well, we have our online, and then we have an ability to uh, order online, pick up at the store, and, and all the various, and I just said Canadian Tire, but so many companies went through that, and I'm sure that there are certain businesses that you went to that manage that better than others, you know, that really thought through what the challenges are, what the volumes might be, what are the bottlenecks that might make this difficult to do and try to get ahead of that to make it a positive experience for the customer. And so for some companies, you know, they've come out, you know, further ahead because they were really able to to capture right away and to provide a, a positive experience. And others that are kind of going, I don't know if I'm going to go back there or when I'll go back there because that really was not was not good. So, you know, lots of ways of how we look at change and then, and then how do we manage that change? How does that directly impact the employee? Because, again, there's going to be that face-to-face, -face, whether it's a virtual face-to-face -face or a physical face-to-face, -face, it's going to happen. And, and that adaption and that understanding of the employee is really important. So barriers to change, reality is everyone thinks philosophically change is great. But then, oh, I thought it was just everybody else was changing, not me too. And, and so it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to, to embrace it uh, as a species. Uh, again, we're, we're used to 
not changing. We try to hold on to things. We like to keep, <coughs> excuse me, certain things constant because that allows them to work through different parts of our brain. So we can keep certain things the same, then it makes it easier for us to do other things differently or to be aware of other things. The reality is everything's always changing. So within your own organization, if you're sitting there going, oh, there's always change. This is crazy. We got to just stop. The reality is our customers are changing. Our customer expectations are changing. Uh, regulations are changing. Um, supply chain is changing. Technology is changing. Um, access to new products is changing. Expectations are changing. Everything is always changing. So if we're not changing our processes along with that, then we're actually inadvertently creating a tension within that organizational structure because our processes aren't delivering exactly what they need to be delivering for what the customer's needs are at that given time. So that if you almost think of it as, you know, your body being thrown out of alignment and and, and creating that tension. So we want to make sure that we're always Right, adjusting and changing and developing processes that are easy to, again, align with what our needs are. And so that change model becomes an actual more of a flow to make things better rather than a challenge toward, well, why do we keep making it different? And so how we approach that is really important. So that leads me to a couple of slides. This, you know, this isn't on culture. But whenever we have, you know, talk about change management, whenever we talk about any organizational shift, uh, we have to think in our own minds about our own co organizational cultures. You know, and so how, how are we organized um, or yourself organized in your organization or in your part of the organization or in your department or division within that organization? How are you set up to, to manage that? that flow that uh, happens with change management. And, you know, as it talks about here, often, you know, culture changes really kind of break down because, you know, we're not thinking about that as we, we try to improve. And then, again, change management becomes that wrapper. It's not a thing. It's a wrapper around everything that we need to always be keeping in mind. And, again, bringing that back to what's been going on recently is, massive disruption in your organization where you had you know large percentages of your of your workforce that is now working from home you know trying to get them set up for that how are they structured how do we communicate how did we have our normal flows of, of organizational um, information flowing back and forth that isn't there anymore anymore or right now so in this it talks about you know, there's a proverbial water cooler that at work people could sort of stand around, talk about, or talk around, and kind of let understand what's going on, and that's gone. So, well, what are we going to, what are you doing to replace that? And, you know, it's like, you know, water will find a route. And so, what you want to do is make sure that you're carving the right paths and structures from that sort of informational flow to make things are working uh, for yourself. So just a couple of things to be thinking about, kind of what is our organizational culture? How does that, how is that impacting what's going on with work from home and COVID-19? And how is it impacting change management and our ability to adapt right now? So hard, how hard is it for change? And again, there's lots of things you need to keep in mind. And as you look at this slide, you know, wrapped around all of these different things around vision, skills, behaviors, policies, accountability is communication, right? And, and I've spoken many times myself that, myself that a good communication strategy is like wind in the sails of your change initiative. That if, you, if you're out there in front and set, you know, putting the seeds in place, when you get to that point, everything's ready for you. And a bad communication strategy um, is like an anchor off the end of your ship, and it really drags you down. You might be able to jump and get started quickly because you're just getting stuff done, but that over time, you're spending more time 
explaining what you're doing, why you're doing it, and actually getting it done. And so, you know, just going to pause for a moment for two reasons. One, I'd like to, in case anyone has any questions to date so far, and I'll do this throughout the presentation, just pause from time to time. You don't have to come on uh, and say, no, no questions. I'll take no response as no questions. And again, we'll have questions at the end, or you can always email uh, Liz afterwards and love to follow up and talk to you about any challenges that you're having in your organization. But I also like you to think about your own company right now and think about kind of what are those kind of key elements and some of the barriers to risk uh, that you have and sort of your thoughts around that. So just want you to sort of reflect back on your own company for a minute and then we'll move on. Okay, so we'll go back from your doorstep to back to sort of the collective one here. Again, there's lots of reasons for resistance to change. And one of the things that you need to do is identify, well, you know, if someone's resistant, why? What is it? Because it's not always the same thing for every person. And really trying to understand, you know, it could be technical or functional reasons for resistance. Now, culture, we talked a little bit about culture, so cultural habits or lack of confidence in the change, um, political, you know, it might be that, well, maybe that's good for the company, but I don't think it's good for me. How does that fit my vision of where I'm going in the company, you know, and how, what I'm responsible for, what's, what, where's my power within this, whether it's real or perceived, you know, psychological around one's confidence. So you need to be thinking about and understanding what are those barriers and what's causing those barriers so that you can uh, apply the right kind of um, release to, to help get through that. And again, communicating back and forth. It's interesting because one of the, as we talk about change management, one of the key tenets around uh, the Lean and Six Sigma methodology and continuous improvement is working with all layers of the organization. So if we're changing something, we're working with the people who do that work because they're the ones that best understand the things that make it difficult to get the work done, right? So uh, built into the methodology around continuous improvement is a lot of the things we'll talk about that sort of those best practices around change management. A couple of different models that are out there and I'm sure a number of you are familiar with them. Each of your organizations may or may not be adapting some of the sort of standard models and use those and certainly encourage you to kind of look and see what structures are in place uh, already within your company and leverage those. And then we'll also talk a little bit about how we've uh, taken a piece of this and created some tools that we think work really well. Uh, so there's Cotter's change model, again, creating urgency. If we think about from a COVID-19, we have that. Right? There's a lot of urgency going on. There's a lot of change that's happening. And it's really interesting, actually, right now, from my experience and what we've been talking to a whole lot of other businesses, is that that resistance to change right now it is low. Uh, people are accepting of change because they've realized that we needed to. Right? When all of a sudden everybody was sent to start working from home, then, well, how are we going to communicate? You know, what, you know, how are we going to move things? So all of a sudden, technology that people said, you know what, can't do that. We've got to be face-to-face. -face. We've got to be beside each other. You know, I've got to give you that piece of paper. All those all of a sudden went away. And not only on an employee level, but on an employer level. A whole lot of challenges that they saw around, well, we can't do it this way. We can't have work from home. We can't, you know, we need to have people in, in their desks. And as soon as that was no longer possible, then all of a sudden people saw, well, what can we do? And the collaboration from an employee and employer perspective was fantastic. And, and a lot of businesses that had, for example, transitions going on from a technology perspective or a pro massive process change perspective that they thought, well, it's going to take us a year to do this. All of a sudden they were doing it in a month because you know, that again, that change 
management pushback was lower. People were realizing, yeah, of course we have to do it differently. So, you know, let's all roll up our sleeves. Let's work together to make this work. And, and huge success around companies uh, with that. Uh, interesting, I was listening to a sort of a fireside chat with John Bayless, who's the Senior Vice President of Logistics at uh, Walmart Canada, and talking about, of course, huge change that went on with uh, supply chain over the last six months and how they were able to work together to adapt and really changing their own kind of models around um, what's good enough. Right and, and kind of risk tolerance around change because things had to happen. And how do you embrace that? And how do you make sure you don't lose that in the next six months when um, often companies go into that sort of they get stuck because you know they paralysis because they don't you know they what if we what if we make a mistake? You know what mistakes will happen. How do we make sure that we mitigate that through good change management, good methodology of approach? But change and getting better is a fantastic thing for every company. So Cotter's change model sort of takes us through that. Um, some of you might be using ADCAR. Again, awareness, desire, knowledge, ability, reinforcement. All of these things kind of take you through um, philosophically a lot of the same things around how do I set myself up for change? How do I make sure that I've got that connection with my employees, that I have the connection structurally up and down the organization, that we're doing the right things and we know and we can measure that we're on the right journey and that we're actually getting the success that we want. So you may be using some of these, I'm not suggesting you change, but leverage how you can use that going forward. We have a change model, which again, uh, kind of holds off of uh, Cotter leading change, creating a shared need, shaping a vision, mobilizing commitment. Those that have uh, worked with us have, have seen some of these tools and templates. I just kind of want to mention a couple of them right now, you know, because the big thing around change management is really understanding what are the, what are the snares that are in front of us? What are those things that could cause us to have issues? And you know, we, we need to get from point A to point B, so what's the best way for us to approach to get that done? How are we going to be successful in getting across the field to where we need to get to? And the better that we can understand and identify the snares or the holes or the undulations, the things that are going to cause us difficulty so we can do, put as much as we can the best mitigation strategies in place to make that work, then the more successful we're going to be. Again, in my mind, if you're going to make a change, if you're going to try to do something, you might as well be successful at it. It might as well work. And if you can do it as, as simply as possible, then all the better. So a couple things around success, and we call these the winning conditions, you know, leading change, shared need, shaping vision, mobilizing commitment. And we kind of talk about that through making, ensuring you have a committed champion to that change ensuring that your needs exceed resistance to the change. You know, we'll talk a little bit about that whole needs and resistance. We talk about right now where, again, that, that's been brought down a little bit just because there's been such a need for people to recognize that we need change uh, to make things work working from home. Desired outcomes are clear and accepted. We understand what we're trying to do, what our goals are, what we need to do, and what success looks like. And then from a mobilizing commitment, strong commitment from key stakeholders, what that really talks about, do we have the resources in place? Are people going to support the effort it's going to take? Because reality is change takes effort, and we want to make sure that we have the right things in place to make that work. Uh, again, this is a simple template that we have where you can kind of look and use your change management team, go to different departments that are impacted and kind of get a gauge on what people think. And then based on, again, this simple use of this model is you can just have people circle what they think is the comment that makes the most sense towards the change. And again, it's not how your organization does it overall, it's about the change that you're trying to make. And this really gives you a really good gauge into what are the potential 
resistances and where do we have positive and negative forces uh, within the organization in regards to the change. And, and from that, then you can then create your strategy around, well, what are we going to do about it? What has to be put in place to make this work? I'm just going to pause for a moment in case there's any questions. Another tool within this, I just want to mention is our stakeholder analysis. And this is really taking a look at, well, who are those key stakeholders within the change that you're trying to make? Again, getting back to continuous improvement or whatever you're trying to do, who are those key stakeholders and what do they think about the change? Where are they today versus where do they need to be for us to be successful? Not everyone has to be a cheerleader. Not everyone has to be strongly supportive. Maybe they just need to be neutral and they're okay because it doesn't really, not really going to make a big difference to them, but they're not opposed and not pushing back on it. So you want to be able to sort of, again, before you go in to your change, you know, think about who are all those players? What do we think they think? And this is often a conversation I would have with my champion. So if I'm the leader of the change, Plus with my champion, we're looking at, okay, so what do we think is going to happen? What are the various areas that are impacted? And we probably got this from our SIPOC, supplier input process output customer, which let us know who those key stakeholders are. We can then think about, well, where are they? Where do they need to be? And then collectively, what are we going to do to get them where they need to be so that we can be successful in our change? What you don't want to do is spend six months getting through it to a certain point in your change and then having it fall down because somebody was never for it. So idea, identify that up front, put it as part of your strategy in your change management to make sure that you understand all of the players and what, what's important to them and how are we going to make this work for the whole thing. Which leads to our communication strategy. Again, in my mind, communication strategy starts day one. It's not just when we're implementing something, it starts throughout the whole process of who, what stakeholders need to know what, uh, to what level of detail, when do they need to know it, how often do they need to know it, what's the best mechanism to communicate that. Again, a good communication plan isn't telling somebody something, it's them understanding it and being able to be part of it. So that whole kind of transfer of knowledge and information is really, really important. And so you work through and create that communication strategy. And one of the nice things about these various tools is that then you can reflect back. So the next time you have a change, you can go back and say, well, what did we do last time? Who did we think was involved? And what did we, what did we learn from that so that our next change initiative um, ideally is easier, right? We're always becoming better and better at this as we build our own competencies within it. And again, I want to sort of relate that back to COVID right now because there's a, a lot of processes that are changing. And depending, again, whether you're, what kind of industry you're in, you're going to have differences in what's going to happen going forward. But again, it's really important in my mind that you have that continuous improvement or process lens that's looking at it. Because, you know, human resources is going to be looking at it. You're going to have a whole committee set up, but you're going to want to look at, well, under the new model, how many, you know, what does that process look like? You know, what's the technology look like? What, you know, what's the, what are the timelines? What do the metrics look like? What are the touch points? How many people do we need to do it? What training do they need to be able to be able to do that? And how do we set them up for success? And so uh, in your organization, I'm really stressing that it would be really important right now to sort of look at uh, where are we moving to and how are we evaluating our various processes. How do we even prioritize which ones we should be looking at first? And, and making sure that any gains we can make or any up, upticks we can make. Uh, you know, that whole work from home landscape is changing and you need to be thinking about it from a strategic priority perspective, public health perspective, workplace environment perspective, employee needs perspective, health and safety perspective. And again, that all wraps around your processes. And as you're looking at processes, 
anything that you're ever engaging in, in, in your whole strategy is what's your change management strategy that fits to this, which is why I think all these things kind of are kind of wound around each other and important to be thinking about. Again, with this change going on right now, uh, communication, engagement, uh, strategy, business continuity, continuous improvement, we see that every day, but uh, right now it's, uh, in my mind, on steroids and really important uh, for your organization. And, you know, we're going to look back at this in six months, one year, five years, and we're going to identify those companies that did this well and those companies that didn't and the impact that that had on their ability to either maintain and stay where they are or to improve or actually decline in the marketplace. You know, your needs have changed or your customers' needs have changed. Making sure that you're always putting the customer in the center of everything. Are you looking at, you know, what, what do they need now? Not what they needed a year ago. How has that changed? And, and how are we making sure that our business processes are giving and delivering what they need, whether that's a product, a service, advice, whatever it is, whether that's an internal customer or an external customer. Because as things have gone down the line, relationships between departments, relationships between divisions have all changed. So lots to reflect on there. And just sort of a summary, keys to success with change management, again, starts with that plan, that strategy, that understanding, that whole wrapper of communication, collaboration, and then making sure that we're always evaluating. What, what are we actually trying to achieve? And so what are the metrics we're trying to move and looking and seeing and making sure that, well, we made it different, I don't know. We don't know whether it's better or not, making sure that everything is quantitative and back to metrics that, you know, to validate your own experience. And that, uh, I went a couple minutes over the time, but that kind of takes us through these, uh, conversation and the sort of change management philosophical change around process continuous improvement and change around today's COVID-19 and work from home and even with those that are going in right social distancing all the process changes that have gone in for those that have to still be uh, front and center and with our with our customers Lots of different resources, so we 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 put some in here because there's a lot that's um, that's out there, and want to have you you know it's easy to Google, but I mean the reality is you get a thousand sources. So what what it, this is a number of sources that we thought were good to read, and a number of these were used in, in putting today's presentation together. So I'm going to uh, open it up for questions. If anyone has any questions for, for us right now, again. Uh, you want to reflect on it think about it email us later uh, that's all well and good but just give you a chance to, if there are any questions from what I've talked about today I'll just pause for a moment thanks Jeff uh, I'm just going to jump in here we did have a question come through a couple questions in the chat window um, but just as well a, a couple of points that you made really resonated, uh, especially with regards to fear, um, because for several months now, we've all been living in, in a perpetual state with, with some fear, either if we're not feeling it personally, it, it's all around us. So being able to create that safe space, that safe culture to help reduce the fear of change uh, is, is definitely, uh, a great a great ability and a, a great competency to have um, also uh, another comment was just about um, the communication discussing that and how important it is to have communication throughout all levels uh, within the organization and touch points and um, that your point about having the communication start from the very beginning the planning process is is definitely key so another one of the questions that uh, came through in comments was, you've gone through quite a few tools throughout the presentation, which was great. However, can you give uh, some guidance on applying these tools to change projects, specifically larger projects, um, 
simply because there, it seems that there's potentially a lot of tools to go through. So if people are focused more on the tools than in the actual change, it, it defeats the purpose. So if you can just provide a little bit more with that, that would be great. Yeah, great, great question. And, uh, and, and certainly after today, if you'd like to have a deeper discussion about it, please reach out to us and we can uh, and have a conversation. We'll set up some time. But, you know, the tools are really to sort of help us understand the context behind the environment that we're going into. So you may have a huge change initiative, but if you don't really understand uh, the lay of the land, if you don't really understand the, the, the feeling of, of the people involved, then you're opening up yourself to risk. It's like, you know, I know that I've got to row the boat across the lake because that's what we need to do. But if I don't understand, you know, how many people are in the boat, what their skills are, what their desire to row is, whether they have the ability to all row together. So from a cultural perspective, from a tools or knowledge perspective, from a personal perspective, a philosophical perspective, then that's going to make it harder for me to just say, okay, well, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to go rope, rope, rope. So I think that initially up front, having some of these tools and really understanding that lay of the land is important. And then you use that information to build out your, your process and your really your project plan, which hasn't changed, which is whatever that change initiative is. This is this really, this really helps you understand the nuances of how you're successfully going to do it. So I'm not sure whether I made it uh, clearer or more complicated, but uh, if you want to, if you have a specific example or would like to set up a call, I'd love to kind of go into that further about some of the value and times when you just need to, you know, how do you use this into the right level, amount of detail? Liz? Thank you, Jeff. That's great. Uh, that was all the main questions we had come through for now. So uh, I know that we're coming close to the end of our Q&A time. So I just want to take a moment. Uh, again, as Jeff mentioned, uh, and as we discussed at the beginning of the presentation, we do offer uh, e-learning options, training, consulting. Uh, and on that, we do have a special promotion. And actually, uh, this slide, I apologize. Uh, it should be until the end of the month because we'd like to offer a special discount for these micro courses. They are self-paced e-learning programs. One is on diversity and inclusion, uh, and then we've got a managing change bundle. So if you're interested in either of those, please let us know. Uh, they definitely dive in a little bit further and continue the conversation that we started today about managing change. Uh, so once again, we will leave the uh, speaker open in case anyone has any other questions they want to come up and speak directly with Jeff but otherwise we just thank you once again for joining us today it's great to have you here we hope that you will come for future webinars uh, some of the topics that were proposed for this year you can see on your screen but if there are any specific topics that you would like to learn more about or uh, discuss, then definitely please send your feedback. Uh, we are preparing for next year's webinar series as well. So we always like to take extra ideas into consideration. So thank you once again. Uh, we're going to leave it open for just a few minutes before we close down the webinar. But we trust that you all continue to be safe and healthy. Have a wonderful afternoon in this warm sunny day here in Ontario. So thank you. Thanks Liz. I just want to also echo appreciate you everyone being online and, and listening in and uh, if you have any questions please follow up with us and again love to have a conversation around change management or continuous improvement in general and uh, wish everybody kind of health as we go through these times and again everyone's business is going to be a little bit different depending on what industry you're in and uh, i wish you success in, in working through that and if you want to talk about work from home strategies or anything else please again you can reach out and we can have a conversation